The road to Altoona starts today. The 1992 Berwick Bulldog Highlights tape is made possible thanks to the Ertley dealership in Berwick. Ertley and Berwick, a longtime supporter of Berwick Bulldog football, is proud to bring you the 1992 Bulldog Highlights tape. August 17th, the first day of high school football practice in Pennsylvania. George Curry has 75 football players, most of them who as far back as they can remember have dreamed about this day. 75 football players eager and anxious to begin the most spectacular season in Berwick football history. You're going to have cameras in your face, you're going to have newspapers, hey, that's Berwick football. But this Berwick team, with a number one preseason ranking in USA Today, a quarterback who has every college coach in the country at Berwick's door, this Berwick team would surpass the greatness of all of the others. All right, all right thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please, sir. Take care. We'll see you after the game. Yep. Okay, the one receiver down there. Opening night, all of Berwick and most of the state anticipates the Bulldogs' first game. A powerful Glenn Mills team is skeptical of the national ranking and comes to Berwick to claim some glory of its own. But all of the glory this night belonged to the Bulldogs. Jason Soboleski, on the first play from scrimmage, went 20 yards. Ron Paulus' first pass of the season was a touchdown, seven yards, to Dante Pecorelli. On the dog's next possession, Paulus out of the shotgun, a big gainer to Pecorelli again. The drive ended with Paulus to Chris Orlando for a 24-yard touchdown. The Bulldogs after two possessions led Glenn Mills 13-0. As Glenn Mills tried to regroup, the Berwick kickoff team set the dogs up again. Glenn Mills fumbled and Berwick recovered. On the next play, Paulus went 28 yards to Ryan Mason for Berwick's third first quarter touchdown. Already, Ron Paulus had made his mark. Four for four, three touchdowns, and Berwick was still in the first half.
The win against Glenn Mills was an all-around team effort. Special teams, again, Mike Soboleski. On defense, Chris Orlando had three interceptions. Jason Soboleski and Ron Paulus finished off the score. The Bulldogs finished off one of the best quad A teams in the state, winning 33-7. understood. Another tough team from out of the area came in for game two. Bishop McNamara was hoping that game one's blowout was some kind of mistake. It wasn't. Mike Soboleski got it going by taking the opening kickoff to the McNamara 18-yard line. The Bulldogs got nothing on that first drive, but the tone for the game had been established. On the next possession, Paulus passed the Bulldogs into position. And Soboleski finished off the drive. Berwick's tough, aggressive play put the dogs into position again. They recovered a McNamara punt fumble, and five plays later, Soboleski scored again. Berwick, early in the second quarter, led 14-0. McNamara came back and tried to make a game of it. The big touchdown pass deep in the Bulldogs' secondary made it 14-7. Berwick seemed to take the McNamara touchdown personally. Ryan Mason took matters into his own hands. A great effort down to the McNamara 25. On the next play, Pulse hit Orlando for the 25-yard touchdown that gave the Bulldogs a 21-7 lead.
After another TD pass to Pecorelli, the defense put the game away. J.C. Cleaver intercepted and ran 34 yards for a Berwick touchdown. The Bulldogs went on to win 42-14. Two weeks into the season, the Bulldogs had beaten two of the toughest teams in the East, and the number one national ranking seemed secure. With the big guns from out of the area disposed of, the Bulldogs began taking care of business at home. Scranton Prep from the tough Big 11 came to Berwick for week three. The Berwick offense struggled early. This running play, the fake to Soboleski and the big gainer by Pulse, the big play in the opening drive that ended without a Berwick score. Finally in the second quarter, Paulus hit Chris Orlando for the big play that set up the Bulldogs' first score of the game. It's not easy to get points on Berwick's defense, but the Cavaliers managed a touchdown before the half, and Berwick led just 8-6. Paulus went to work to get more Bulldog points before halftime. The two-minute drill ended with this 16-yard TD run. Berwick went on to beat Scranton Prep 35-6, Berwick's third straight win. Game four took the Bulldogs on the road for the first time. At Wyoming area, the defense put up its first shutout of the season. Paulus ran for three touchdowns and threw for one. Berwick won 28 nothing to go 4 and 0. Oh. Back home for week 5, a standing room only crowd to see Berwick put its national title on the line against Wyoming Valley West in the game's first drive. Bill Hetler breaks a tackle and goes 14 yards. Soboleski gets the two-point try, and the Bulldogs lead 8-0. The Berwick defense held, and the offense went right back to it. Paulus found Hetler for a big gainer, setting up Berwick's next score. That came when Paulus hit Ryan Mason on a 14-yarder. The Bulldogs scored on the first two drives to lead 15-0. 
The Paulus-Hetler combination worked again. Another big play over the middle to set up Soboleski's one-yard touchdown to make it 22-0. Then the defense. Watch the Valley West receiver split wide. Chris Orlando steps in front of the pass for the interception, his seventh of the year. Jason Soboleski finished it off. The Bulldogs went in at halftime, already leading 29-0. They came out in the second half looking for more, and they got it. Paulus scrambling, breaks a tackle, and scores. <laughs> Paulus is blitzed, but gets the pass off to Chris Orlando. An 18-yard touchdown, the Bulldogs lead 42-0. The good calls and the touchdowns kept coming. Soboleski scored from 21 yards. I took that 64, like two yards off the ball, and then all of a sudden he started fighting that way, so I turned him back in that way. And then all of a sudden I see everybody, and then I hear the damn siren go off, and I was like, all right. <laughs> there was lots to laugh about. Dante Pecorelli finished off the scoring with a 38-yard run. 55-7 the final. 55 points, the most scored by the Bulldogs in their first five games. When Scranton came to Berwick for week six, people were beginning to understand why this team was getting national exposure. Chris Orlando made a tremendous catch in the end zone to open the scoring. Running game exploded for three touchdowns, including a pair from Jason Soboleski. And the Berwick special teams were outstanding as well. This grant and punt blocked by Soboleski and into the hands of Nick Vadeko, who went 38 yards for the touchdown. Forty-nine, nothing. The final, a total team victory, and the sixth in a row. Hazleton came in for week seven, and the Cougars gave the Bulldogs more football than they bargained for. The big play Berwick offense struggled with Hazleton's defense. Finally, quarterback Ron Paulus saw Dante Pecorelli, and the 42-yard touchdown gave Berwick a 7-0 lead.
But Hazleton's offense moved against Burrow. The defense that it had allowed just five touchdowns in six games was having trouble with Hazleton's running game. Late in the half, the Cougars driving for the tying touchdown. But Chris Orlando intercepts and ends the Hazleton drive on the last play of the half. The Cougars came out in the second half and took over where they left off. They scored a touchdown to make it 7-6, but missed the game-tying extra point. With their perfect season and national ranking on the line, quarterback Ron Paulus took matters into his own hands. This play has worked all season, but never quite this well. Paulus exploded through the big hole and ran 61 yards for a touchdown. The extra point made it 14-6 and allowed the Bulldogs a little breathing room. Mike Bennett finished off Hazleton's last try with an interception. Berwick won it 14-6, but there was no hooting, no hollering after work, no locker room celebration. This one was too close. Good ball, dogs. Not good at all, guys. Not good at all. Uh, you did do what you had to do. We are 7-0. We are in the driver's seat. You beat a big quad A school, good football school. They're gonna be in the playoffs. But we gotta we gotta get back to Burke football. The Wyoming Valley Championship was on the line when Coughlin came to Crispin Field. The Crusaders, the last obstacle between the Bulldogs and one of their season goals to win the Wyoming Valley Conference Championship. The Bulldogs began the scoring when Paulus hit Orlando with a 21-yard touchdown. Next, the Berwick defense. Mike Bennett intercepts and goes 66 yards. The offense behind Jason Soboleski's 77 rushing yards rolled up 464 total yards. Paulus threw three touchdown passes, 16 now for the season. The Bulldogs beat Coughlin 65-6, a devastating display of both offense and defense against a good Coughlin team. The game against Coughlin was the last one at home in the regular season. The Bulldogs would continue their quest for a perfect season, playing their last three games on the road. It was Hollow's Eve in Tunkhannock, but the only thing scary was what a mighty Burwick team might do to the Tigers. It started matter-of-factly. Mike Sobolewski and Ron Paulus with a couple of short runs.
Another from Jason Soboleski, 21-0 Bulldogs. Then Paulus started to hook up with Dante Pecorelli, a 19-yarder to make it 28-0. And a 70-yarder again to Pecorelli to make it 35 nothing. Oh, let me get that. There's that four yeah, six that. Team, buddy. what I'm saying to you? See, there's a five flat when I time you in practice. There's a four five game. Good job. Good job, Tess. Come on, here, Peck. There were so many others doing a good job, too. B.J. Hayes didn't look very special when this kick return began. But watch what happens when Hayes gets some open field. Hayes' touchdown gave the Bulldogs a 41-7 lead and gave George Curry a chance to see his future. Dante Pecorelli took over for Paulus at quarterback, who added another 239 yards to his total. Pecorelli led a scoring drive in the final minutes, and Berwick won for the eighth time, 48-7. The win at Tunkhannock clinched for the Dogs, their fifth straight Wyoming Valley Conference title. They were on the road for the second straight week when they visited Pittston area. Paulus and Soboleski each scored on a pair of short runs. Center Jim Whitmire and tackle. Tony Saltasia dominated the line play as the Bulldogs scored five running touchdowns. Paulus also threw two more TD passes, numbers 19 and 20, both to Mike Bennett, whose 73-yard catch and run gave the Bulldogs a 29-0 lead. Mike Sobolewski finished off the Berwick scoring with a 25-yard run. The Bulldogs won it 47-0, the third shutout for the defense. Berwick's first team defense gave up just three touchdowns in 10 games. In the final regular season game at Williamsport, Berwick won 39-7 and looked forward to the Eastern Conference playoffs back home at Crispin Field. The Eastern Conference playoffs provided a new challenge for the Bulldogs. The Wyoming Valley title was the first step to a state championship. But to get into the state playoffs, Berwick had to win the Eastern Conference. Longtime rival Shimokin was in the way. You're the visiting team, it's punched head and tail. Call it while it's in the air, and I have to catch it. Ready? Yes. Tails he says, and tails it is. You have a choice. Kick and receive, defend the goal, or defer to second half. You are going to defer to the second half. You have a choice to receive. You will receive which goal you're going to defend. All right, you get over there, please. You come over here, please. You're going to receive, right? After three weeks on the road, the Bulldogs were happy to be back home, and the Berwick faithful were glad to see them. Paulus to B.J. Hayes. The Dogs are set up deep in Shimokin territory. Paulus finished it, and the two-point try was good. 8-0, Berwick. Shimokin on offense, but not for long. The pass is tipped, and Bill Hetler is there to set up Berwick's second score. The Bulldogs didn't go undefeated by playing patty cake with their special teams. Good job, good job, good job, good job, buddy. Good job. 
Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. The dogs again on defense. They recover, and Orlando is out at the one. That set up Paulus's one yarder to make it 22 0. Special teams play again, put the Bulldogs in position. Orlando returns the punt to the Shimokin nine yard line. Next play, Paulus to Soboleski, a seven yarder. The romp was on as the Bulldogs went ahead 28 0. There was more to do in the second half, and the Bulldogs did it in a big way. First play after a Shimokin turnover, Paulus deep to Mike Bennett. Deep indeed, the 93-yard touchdown pass, the longest in Berwick history. The Bulldogs won the Eastern Conference semifinal 49-0. The shutout, the first against Shimokin in 45 games. Paulus set new records for total yardage and touchdown passes. The Bulldogs were ready for the Eastern Conference title game against North Pocono. The Trojans from the Big 11 were the last team to beat Berwick. So the Bulldogs needed no other incentive than the Eastern Conference title game. Paulus started the scoring midway through the first quarter. A six yard run with a good kick and a seven nothing Berwick lead. And then Chris Orlando made his contribution first on the receiving end of a Paulus pass 13 yards, 14 nothing. Then the play that really put the Trojans away. Orlando took a North Pocono punt and returned it 60 yards for the Berwick touchdown. The point after gave the Bulldogs a 21 nothing lead. Later, it was Paulus and Orlando again. The All-American quarterback went 18 yards to make it 28-0. And to finish out the scoring, Paulus to Orlando, a 10-yard TD pass. The Bulldogs played it conservative in the second half. The defense, for the second week in a row, shut out a playoff team. 35-0 was the final. Berwick, 13-0, and another goal reached. Eastern Conference champions. There were two goals remaining, an undefeated season and a state championship. Both were just two wins away. Hershey, a cold and windy day. Another challenge for the Bulldogs, who would have to eliminate, because of the severe weather conditions, 75% of its offense. Mannheim Central, the Bulldogs' opponent in the state semifinal, made some early progress. Their veer offense, which Berwick hadn't defended against all season, opened the game with an impressive drive. It ended only after Mannheim fumbled near the Berwick goal line. The Bulldogs finally got their own offense revved up. It was difficult to pass. Still, Paulus managed to move the ball through the swirling winds. This big gainer to Bennett set up the game's first touchdown. Paulus kept it himself and went 30 yards for the score. The two-point try was no good, but early in the second quarter, Berwick had a 6-0 lead. Running the ball was a sound game, and Berwick, behind its talented offensive line, controlled the ball and the clock. Jason Soboleski scored twice on short touchdown, and at halftime, Berwick had a 22-0 lead. When they came out for the second half, 
the Bulldogs knew Mannheim's run offense would be hard-pressed to score three touchdowns on a defense that hadn't allowed even one in three weeks. By now, Mannheim's veer was no longer a novelty, and Berwick was dominating on both sides of the ball. Paulus was conservative in the air, but productive. This completion to Orlando set up another Berwick score. Paulus went in from the one to put the game away. The Bulldogs proved in the state semifinal just how talented they are. For the first time in 13 games, Paulus did not throw a touchdown pass. Still, Berwick scored four times on the ground. They beat Manheim 29-6. All that remained was one final game in Altoona for everything. December blizzard may have postponed Berwick's championship season, but it did not dampen the enthusiasm of the team or of the town. 5,000 fans came to Altoona to see their dogs play for the state championship. way back in August. The Black Hawk Cougars brought a big offense and a perfect record to Altoona. They came out in the first quarter and did something no one had done all season. They took the opening drive of the game and scored. It was the first time all season the Bulldogs had been behind. They weren't behind for long. Quarterback Ron Paulus put together a near-perfect drive of his own. Berwick drove 76 yards. Paulus, four for four on the drive, including the first of four touchdown passes. This one to Chris Orlando, 36 yards. The extra point was blocked. It was 6-6. Bulldog defense got the ball right back. Ryan Wolf recovered a Cougar fumble on the Black Hawk 26. Three plays later, Paulus and Orlando hooked up again. A five yard touchdown, the extra point blocked again. 12-6 Berwick after the first quarter. Blackhawk brought one of the most explosive offenses in the state into the game. 45 points a game they averaged. But on this day, 
Berwick's swarming defense forced six Cougar turnovers. When Paulus hit Orlando for his third TD catch of the game, Berwick had a 19-6 lead and they took that into the locker room. Dogs made one slight switch at halftime. They moved Bill Hentler into the fullback spot to replace Jason Sobolewski, who had injured his ankle. Hentler became the key figure in Berwick's second half offense. He rushed seven times for 45 yards. Hentler's running success allowed the Bulldogs to control the ball and the clock in the second half. He scored once from the five to make it 26-6. finished out the scoring and his career with a touchdown pass to Hetler, and that made it Some of the youngsters came in to finish it off. Their time will come another season. But as the clock ticked down on this one, the celebration began in the most spectacular season in Berwick football history. Thank you. 
You guys are the state champions. Congratulations, man. It's all yours.
the most difficult achievement in team sports, to lead from the beginning to the end when every week is somebody else's playoff game, to carry the label as the best team in America and play as if you were every single week. There have been other great Berwick teams and there certainly will be more. But this one, with its All-American quarterback, a player the likes of which we may never see again. This team, with its character and its poise, this is the one all others will be compared to. The 1992 Berwick Bulldogs, 15 and 0, Pennsylvania's state champion, the best high school football team in America.